previous episode, we actually made a little gear wheel for the, this worm gear, and the next stage is to make a housing for it, which is actually a little tricky. You can see some curves in there that we have to turn. The slot we have to make, flat surfaces on the side of this round shaft. Um, and uh, I'm going to speed up some of this so that it's not too boring, and uh, just show you how I made this assembly here. So this is what we're building. This episode will include how to cut a thread. As you can see here, the uh, work gear, of course, is driven by a thread. And I've chosen that to match the 20 millimeter tap that I used to make the gear wheel with. And that has a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. And so we're going to have a look on the lathe to um, see what uh, gear wheels we need to use in a gear train to create a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. We need a 48 tooth stud gear and a gearbox setting of C1. So we look on here at the gear train and we see this one here has got 48 written on it. That's the stud gear that we choose. And the other double gears here are for converting to metric. One gear is 127 teeth, the other one has 100 teeth. And that'll do the conversion to make 2.54 uh, centimeters per inch. Two times 127 is 254, and that's how it gets the conversion to 2.54 centimeters per inch. This lever has to be up to get a right-hand thread. Uh, if you want a left-hand thread, you move that lever down. And uh, here we see the 40-speed gearbox. We're setting it to position C1, C on the first lever and 1 on the second lever. And this will give us a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. The numbers on this table are confusing because they're actually the feed rates when you're using the same gearbox for doing automatic cross-feed or longitudinal feed. And... Uh, the cross feed is 0.3 times the longitudinal feed, but that's not that doesn't match the number of threads per inch either. So the other thing we have to do is uh, adjust the compound slide so that we can get an angle of 60 degrees to match the angle that's on the thread. So we have to use a tool that's been cut to an angle of 60 degrees, as you'll see in a minute when we're doing it. But also the cross slide has to be swung around to a 60 degree angle so that you're cutting only one side of this V-shaped tool so that the groove it's cutting is only cut on one edge rather than both and that'll avoid jamming and damaging a thread. And you've probably seen this before but the uh, compound slide is uh, held in place with two Allen screws actually. I've loosened one of them here and left the other one loose but really you should clamp them both tight. Uh, and then once it's loosened you can then rotate the compound slide around so you can cut tapers and angles. And in this case, we're going to use it to make sure that the cutting tool, when we're cutting the thread, is only fed at an angle of 60 degrees, so it's only cutting on one side. Now we make sure that the selector lever is in the central position, which is neutral. And the bottom position is for the cross slide automatic feed, and the top one is for longitudinal feed. So we want that in neutral. Then we pull this lever up and that clamps two half nuts onto the lead screw which you can see in the background here and that drives the whole carriage along at 1.5 threads per inch. And so we've got our work ready to go, we turn it on and we'll find that the tool moves in the correct direction while it's rotating and moves it at just the right speed to make 1.5 threads per inch. Oh, I forgot to mention that we're running in back gear here so that it runs quite slowly, very low RPM. Now I'm disengaging get back gear altogether and putting it in neutral and turning the chuck backwards so that I can wind it on this lead screw back to the starting point again. Now we shouldn't really have to do this with uh, the correct kind of setup. Um, it has a dial on the carriage which tells you its position and you're supposed to be able to use that but because this machine has been converted from English to metric that didn't work. So I said I'm having to wind the motor backwards and since the motor doesn't go in reverse that uh, had to be done by hand and that's why I wanted to rewire it later to make the motor run in reverse. Now for the next stage of the project I need a piece of bar cut off and my wife's nephew Robert from Australia is doing this little job for me cutting the next section. And we'll then put this in the four jaw chuck sideways like this so that we can cut a flat surface across the front, basically using the uh, facing technique.
that you would on the end of a bar, but we're doing it across the side to make a flat area. Now we're using the automatic crossfeed, which we've talked about before, and you can see the selector lever is now in the bottom position for the cross slide, but the half nuts are pulled, lever is pulled down so that it is not engaging in the lead screw thread at all, uh, except through the crossfeed mechanism. So that lever needs to be down and the selector needs to be in the bottom position. And uh, that feeds the tool across the work and faces the front of it like this. Now the next stage of the project is to drill some holes along the side of this flat surface to make a slot where the gear wheel will go. And it's quite fun to play this back in slow motion. And so we drill a hole right through with the largest drill size I have, which was the 5 8 inch drill. And once that's drilled right through, I move the work along, maybe a quarter of an inch, and drill the hole again. I keep repeating this until I've made a slot. Now of course this leaves a pretty rough slot, so it has to be cleaned up with a file, and it takes a little time filing. I've cut it short here, and then we try to fit the gear, and it doesn't fit, need some more filing and eventually get it to the point where it fits perfectly. And uh, here's a stage where it's nearly finished. And finally I want to make a curved surface on the inside edge of this so it'll fit on the top of the other circular object. So it needs a circular curve cut on the side of it. It's a little tricky to set up to work out exactly what radius I want this curve to be and then position the, the work in the chuck securely enough so it doesn't get knocked out by the motion of this tool but this is how I finally got it set up and cut a nice little neat curve on the inside surface. The next stage of the process is a fairly crude milling process and I've got some basically milling saws uh, I picked these up actually on a street market in Switzerland, a, um, in Geneva, where they made watches. And this is old watchmaking equipment. Uh, it's a 30 millimeter diameter saw, 2.5 millimeters, I think, in width. And I'm just going to use it to uh, cut out a section out of the out of the bar. So I've actually just turned this shaft as kind of a mandrel with a thread in the end, so I can screw the um, sawtooth onto it. The difficult part now is to mount this piece of work in such a way that I can run the uh, milling tool across it. And I've got this um, boring tool, the black section here is a uh, tool holder for the boring tool. The boring tool is just a bar and I took the bar out and put a threaded shaft through and nuts on each end of it to clamp it tight and was able to clamp the work quite firmly onto the boring tool post and clamp it in and then you know, that was ready to install the saw and start cutting it. So here you see it cutting away merrily. A little bit crude but it works okay and so I just made a whole series of cuts like this so that I could take this whole section out to the side. Now when I moved the camera around the back of the work so I could see what was going on, I realised that I'd been cutting not only the work but also the bolt that I put through the middle, so, anyway, so I was cutting a bit of steel there. And when it was all finished, of course I had to file it up and polish it up nicely, and this is uh, pretty much the finished product. And we'll put this threaded sleeve inside here, that's our 20mm thread we were making. And then we put the gear wheel in. And shaft for it. Should really do those screws up and uh, it runs quite smoothly. It does the job it was designed for. And I've got it on a couple of rings here so that I can alter the position. That's why that slot is so big because I wanted to be able to move the angle of the power takeoff so that I could drive different kinds of objects. Now I've got the whole machine assembled and put on the barbecue uh, so that I can use the flame, gas flame from this to boil the water in the boiler. The steam goes up that vertical shaft in the middle to the horizontal shaft, which is a, like a manifold, through a valve up to the top, 
and uh, should come out the jets to make the spinner spin around. Unfortunately, that design with the ball bearing races didn't work because they're sealed ball bearings that have plastic sleeves on the side of them to seal the steam in, and they created too much friction. So I had to start again and redesign it using little pivots on the end. Uh, they're little tapered pin-shaped sections that fit into a similar inverse uh, section on the end of the shaft, a bit like uh, the internal parts of a watch. And the white knob on the right is, is used to adjusting the amount of pressure on those pins. So, finally I have a version that works quite nicely on steam, and I will use that gearbox, but I'm going to modify the plan. I'd like to gear it down as the next stage in the project. So, here we have it running on steam at 12 psi when I first turn it on. So that's the end of Season 2, Episode 2, and the next season, next uh, episode will be about overhauling the head of the lathe.